Hey guys, it's Matthew here once again, and yesterday the development manifesto for 3.7, the Legion League, was released, and it's fairly big. There's a few things to talk about. Basically, it just goes over, um, you know, a few of the big changes to the meta and uh, the things they're currently focusing on for the next league, as well as just a few skill adjustments, a few sort of mechanic adjustments. And I did want to go over it for you guys. I just then finished doing it on stream, but I want to consolidate what we've learned and just uh, go over it uh, in a little bit, you know, more of a brief version uh, on a video. And uh, then we have the patch notes later tonight. And uh, of course, I will go over those as well in detail while being mildly inebriated by possibly some wine, something like that. But um, that's usually when you try and pick your starter build, your um, actual official, official sort of starter build thing you're going to try out after you've seen all the patch notes. So until then, you don't really want to jump in because you don't know the exact changes to the numbers and the skills that you might want to play. So here is the development man manifesto. I'll try and go over it in some detail, but also uh, just you know skip over stuff that we already know. So basically, they are saying it's going to be largely a melee focus patch. The last one was a big spell sort of um, focus. And for the most part, you played a lot of spells in Synthesis if you were playing Synthesis uh, throughout the league. Very heavily spell favored, and this time around it's very uh, heavily melee favored and attack based as well. So it should be a lot of fun diving into all kinds of melee shit and uh, feeling really good with the new changes. So uh, first of all, they say early game melee combat feel. So um, they're trying to change up a lot of the early game, which is... Um, well, one of the hardest things to get into for Path of Exile. The first few hours are kind of a grind, kind of a slog. They're very tough to properly enjoy, especially if you're a new person. And, uh, you know, if I have to recommend Path of Exile to someone, I'll say, make sure you play it for, you know, like six to ten hours, because the first few hours just really aren't that much fun. They say most melee skills now have a more or less attack speed shown on the gem as a percentage of base attack speed, as to both better match their animations and create a noticeable difference between fast, aggressive attacks and slower, deadlier slams. Many of the low-level weapons have had their attack speed increased to bring them close to the fastest speed of their item class. Um, so that should lessen the feeling of a weapon feeling clunkier compared to a lower level equivalent with more of the speed coming from the weapon class and the skills it can use. So hopefully um, you try and max out a lot of your attack speed by the end of a character and that's when the character starts to feel really good. If uh, some of the early game attack speed can feel a lot better that means you will enjoy melee a lot sooner on um, rather than when you're really trying to max it out near the end and hopefully that will come forward in the leveling process. Uh, striking multiple targets. So essentially right now you pick up um, the game and you start and you have default attack and then something like viper strike, double strike, those are all single target things that will only hit one enemy. So when you have like three zombies in front of you, and you're, you're only hitting one. It feels terrible and it sucks. And they're going to change that so that all of those types of skills will be hitting a little splash in front of you. Uh, essentially like a melee splash, but just makes it a bit more comfortable to start out with those skills. Um, and then the standard melee attack animation has changed using one based on the double strike animation. So it'll kind of be a lot more obvious that you're doing an attack. Uh, this improves the feeling of combat flow while creating a new hit rhythm that will be more consistent across classes. And then they say we aim to uh, make much greater animation improvements in 4.0, the mega expansion, where this is a step towards more natural feeling combat. So overall, it should feel a lot better uh, early on to use any of these skills and uh, fight early game monsters, especially ones that aren't super threatening, but uh, there's more than one of them near you. Uh, so that should feel a lot nicer. Skill rebalance made a pass of damage attack and area of effect to many melee skills. Goal of this is to make some less powerful choices more competitive with other uh, comparable alternatives. And that's uh, good. Right now, a lot of skills are only just a little bit behind in uh, power or area even. Um, then their you know counterparts are going to be much more used and uh, just a slight change here or there is all that some of these things need because they are very viable they're very playable but people don't play them because uh, they're not the best option or they haven't been highlighted well enough to be good so I try to do a lot of skills and uh, they're all pretty much fun you know you can make a lot of them good they just need a slight tweak so then they say many attack gems have also had added damage that grows as the gem levels so 
similar to um like spells that just gain damage as they level you're going to get damage as you level through a lot of the attack based gems and that's a really nice change for these attacks and uh, for melee because currently you have to invest quite a lot of currency as you're leveling in upgrading your gear your weapons um, to keep up with the spell sort of meta and if your attacks just get built in damage happening as you level with them it's going to make uh, leveling so much nicer and smoother with those and uh, ultimately maybe even more powerful in the long run so that's a really nice change too just kind of um, upgrading your character as you go without necessarily having to get better and better weapons and then um, they said they've made some significant changes to support gems. So multi-strike, this support now provides a lower attack speed multi, just over half of the existing support gem. The previous gem was too much attack speed, blah, blah, blah. Um, the skill repeats now have a damage multiplier dealing with double, uh, dealing double damage on the third repeat. So um, it'll still be faster, but not quite as fast. It'll instead deal a little bit more damage and then double damage on the third repeat. Uh, so it's just trying to get away from so much attack speed from this one gem and also give some uh, damage bonus too. You can now interrupt a multi-strike attack between repeats, letting you avoid a dangerous possibility or end on an ongoing uh, end an on ongoing attack sequence when all enemies have already been dealt with. Overall, this makes multi-striking attacks much more responsive. So now that you can actually like stop your multi-strike mid-cast, uh, it does become more important to get that third one in since it has that bigger damage, but it also means you're going to be a lot safer uh, in your dodging of uh, big boss abilities. This does kind of leave multi-strike in somewhat of a weird place because... Um, this is uh, kind of to prevent having too much attack speed out there. Currently, if you have the Berserker with all that attack speed and then add the current multi-strike in, you'll have way too much attack speed. So a regular, let's say, um, good dueled melee character gets like 10 to 12 attacks per second right now. If you then add Berserker in or some of the new shit coming in, on top of that, you're going to be hitting like 20 attacks per second, which is why multi-strike is getting this sort of number nerf right now. And ultimately, you might not even need multi-strike in any of your builds, uh, or in a lot of your builds anyway, because my last gladiator, who was double strike, played without multi-strike almost the entire of the way through, and it was totally fine and it felt good. Uh, this is going to be kind of one you're going to have to watch out for. See how often you're standing still and especially getting that third hit in. See how much you need that extra attack speed. You might find out that multi-strike is altogether not that necessary. So we'll have to wait and see on that one. Uh, melee splash is now so uh, changed so that you hit multiple targets with a single weapon swing. Melee splash can now create multiple splash effects each attack. So the skill now has a larger splash damage penalty as it can much more effectively destroy groups of enemies if you position your attacks carefully. So uh, it could still be used, could still uh, give you much bigger and better splash and we'll have to wait and see on that one but uh, possibly a lot of these uh, inherent little splash things that got changed will mean that uh, melee splash isn't necessary but for the bigger stuff maybe it still will be something you have to play around with fortify now provides a more melee damage stat instead of increased melee damage so that it becomes a competitive gem as a pure um, support in your main links uh, i did mention this uh, that as a hardcore character currently just played hardcore up to level 99 and um, as a pure hardcore person i think you probably will want fortify in your main links as a softcore person i think your chances are still going to be using fortify as a um sort of afterthought to something on your leap slam for example keep it up whenever you can because i'd say fortify is probably going to have 20 to 30 percent more damage compared to a 50 percent more damage gem it's still going to be lackluster uh, but it does open up the availability of the elder um, fortified gem level sort of um, built-in stat on weapons to be crafted as a seventh link so that's going to be rather big you're going to craft you know an elder two-handed sword an elder two-handed staff something like that with fortify as a gem link there seventh link item it's going to be pretty tasty to get these uh big seven link items out there so i think that's a a real nice change for the crafting scene in the um weapon classes 
Uh, new support and skill gems. We've introduced a number of new support gems, two of which enhance or support slower attacks, while another support gem and aura skill further enhance the pure physical damage playstyle. So we probably have something similar to a brutality, something that's just better for pure fizz, which is good stuff. An aura that's probably going to be similar to a herald of um, purity, a bunch of extra physical damage, something like that, uh, which is also really good because um, there's not much reservation out there for those types of characters right now. And then two um, supports that kind of enhance slower attacks. Uh, I think that should be pretty cool to see because currently you want to go faster and faster and the faster you attack, the better you are. Um, in this type of game and uh, meta right now. Possibly if they make uh, slower attacks and um, slower hits just much more rewarding and feel good in this entire um, sort of change, that would be pretty cool to see if you want to maybe build towards that as opposed to just straight up going faster. So I'm uh, pretty keen to find out what those are and as well as that, see how the entire melee um, change feels for the slower sort of uh, hitting stuff as well. You then have uh, Marauder Duelist Ascendancy changes. So as we've already looked at, Chieftain Berserker Slayer got changed up pretty heavily. And um, we've already looked at all of that. Berserker will easily be some of the best damage out there and also some of the best feeling because of how fast it's going to attack. Attacking faster, moving through the game faster always feels a lot better. And Berserker is going to have so much built in attack speed that it's definitely one to um, think about when making a melee character. As well as that, Slayer is looking real nice. And then I still like Gladiator, so maybe entirely possible that we still roll a gladiator as a first character but it's going to be a tough decision for me between the three of these personally i'm actually not sure until we see patch notes and maybe some of the new skill numbers and uh gem damage info we then have passive tree changes this uh redesigning the positioning and passive wheels of just about everything melee on the passive tree as well as some bow and wand clusters uh, particular focus on making critical strikes more viable for a larger selection of melee builds means probably a lot more crit nodes down on the bottom side of the tree. Many rewarding opportunities to specialize in certain mechanics like area, armor, evasion, impale, blind, fortify. This is all pretty damn exciting. A shakeup of the passive tree, uh, especially on the bottom side of things, uh, is probably going to make um, some tough choices as to like the best possible nodes because uh, a revamp at this point means that a lot of nodes are going to get so much better. And there's going to be some real good crit stuff, I'd say, on the bottom side of the tree. So uh, it's going to be fun trying to explore the min-max of the passive tree yet again. Uh, accuracy, they've made it so it's a lot easier to hit your higher cap. So that uh, you can actually now hit 100%. Previously, you could only hit 95 So now you can actually cap out your accuracy. And there's easier ways of getting accuracy cap. Um, as well as that, uh, it'll be a bit different for white monsters compared to like uniques. So it'll be a bit harder to cap out your stuff on unique enemies, but you should be able to cap your accuracy uh, against um, general pack clearing a lot easier, which makes most of the game feel a lot better. And it does also mean that um, things like Lycosidae won't be as used uh, anymore. Hits can't be invaded and chance won't be as used anymore, but they do still see their own um, sort of niche they're not completely dead a lot of cast on crit characters completely ignore accuracy stacking and uh, just use one of those items which is still going to be the best way to do that so i wouldn't completely throw those items away but they will be seen a lot less i'd say um, and then i also say as a result of the accuracy calculation monsters will have a high chance to hit players as well this isn't so noticeable against characters fully invested in evasion, but you'll have a more noticeable impact if you have a low amount of evasion. There's less free mitigation. You have to work for it now. My interpretation of this is um, a lot of characters right now can get like 20 to 30% evasion quite easily. That's from like one or two items very easily. It's probably just going to be a bit harder to get that low end happening. And as well as that, things like Stib Knight Flask and Blind on enemies will probably be less effective. Uh, because currently it's very easy to just get a lot of mitigation that way with almost no investment. Um, that's my interpretation. We'll have to wait and see on that one exactly, but uh, I think it'll be fine in the end. Dagger and Staff base types. They're going to separate um, a couple of base types so that both staves and daggers have pure 
um, weapon type ones that actually have attack based uh, mods only, no spell casting mods on them. Currently crafting these two is very hard if you're trying to make an attack based dagger or staff. Um, it's pretty hard because there's a lot of uh, spell damage rolls in there as well. So they're going to try and separate that onto different bases. Means that it should be a lot easier to craft this type of stuff. And um, we'll have to wait and see if there's any changes to dagger and um, staff stuff that makes them more tempting. As I proved, daggers right now are in a pretty okay spot still. Did play a dagger character and it's totally fine if you can get the right weapon for it. So that should make it a bit easier. Added damage from weapons and jewels. Currently, um, the damage granted by a high tier elemental weapon prefix compared poorly with equivalent physical modifiers. So let's say an Ellie foil compared to an Ellie um, compared to a physical foil. It's uh, currently the Ellie prefixes really don't matter that much because of how much added damage you get everywhere else from um, jewelry, uh, jewels. Um, you know the auras, the gems, all of that shit comes together to give you a lot of elemental damage and your weapon itself is really only important or super important for the crit and the attack speed they're going to try and bump up the elemental damage a bit and at the same time they are nerfing some abyssal jewels to uh, have roughly 30 percent less damage numbers on the abyssal jewels themselves because uh obviously they're pretty goddamn stupid so that's fine that change is okay abyssal jewel stacking on the high end will still be very stupid but uh obviously not as dumb and it will be harder to uh, justify a lot of these abyssal items your two socket abyssal you know tomb fists and light poachers that sort of shit because it'll be harder to get the really good jewels according to uh, these changes though still exist some really good jewels but it's going to be harder to roll them and they're not going to be quite as good so it will be harder to justify those items but on the top end they will still be used and they will still be fine as well as that um regular jewels will have their um, weapon type modifiers changed so instead of saying increased physical damage with daggers it will say just increased damage with daggers so that your elemental sort of uh, jewels are just a little bit better and I think that's a good change it will be uh, hard to beat the regular jewels with abyssal ones on the passive tree because uh, you can get good attack speed like a couple of good attack speed rolls a good crit multi roll and then a damage roll with your weapon type that'll be a really nice jewel to try and go for you then have general combat changes uh, for animation cancelling. You can now cancel your own skills when the first 20% of the attack. And uh, there's actually quite a lot to look into here. It's just going to be ultimately how it feels once we get into it and start playing around with it. I get the feeling it's going to take a bit of getting used to because you're going to cancel some of your attacks every now and again. Uh, when you didn't mean to, you're going to swap to another skill and cancel when you didn't mean to. Um, but overall, I think it's just going to be something we have to jump in and play around with and get used to. And then min-maxing uh, your actual playstyle is probably going to be a bit tougher and uh, more skill-based than before. So that's actually, I think, overall pretty good news. But long story short, you can cancel an attack in the first 20% of the skill by performing another skill or by moving. And uh, you can't interrupt it with your own skill twice. So you can't go double strike and then double strike again to re-interrupt it. You have to double strike, then move, or double strike, then uh, use a movement skill to uh, cancel that out. We then have a shift in the enemy combat system themselves. So the enemies are going to have uh, some changes, especially um, Act 1, 2, and the early game. So uh, it'll be pretty fun to, you know, fight some of these um, different types of monsters and uh, bosses in the first few acts right from the start at Legion uh, because they'll uh, swing a bit differently, they'll have a few different effects and uh, different um, sort of skills to play against and uh, it should be fun to actually try and dodge things for a change as opposed to just taking them and uh, feeling pretty clunky when you're trying to dodge. Instead it should feel a bit smoother and uh, they say the some monsters use the new melee system so their area with the area their attacks hit will match the animations they use making combat feel more connected letting you respond to actions so it should be a nice change to uh actually interact with monsters more than just um what you currently do so then as far as skill changes are concerned uh in general speaking they say that there will be now travel skills so currently there's just movement skill tag 
So let's say cyclone is a movement skill and uh, whirling blades is a movement skill, whereas they'll instead separate those to have travel skills and movement skills uh, so that you can actually properly spec into more damage or utility of one and the other. Uh, so that's basically all that means. Um, things like uh, whirling blades, I assume, would just be a travel skill and things like cyclone will count as a movement skill instead. Uh, defensive skills, so we already went over that with Molten Shell, Immortal Coal, and uh, the new Iron Skin skill, it elaborates over here, but they want you to be able to use your defensive abilities more situationally and think about what you're doing and when you're doing rather than just try and have it up all the time, like your flasks, for example. Um, instead, you want to pick your time when you pop your little defensive boost because you might be about to take some big damage from a boss. And I think that'll be fine. Uh, there'll still be some autopilot stuff available anyway. But then changing a few powerful skills uh, in the form of Winter Orb, Stormbrand, Bane, and Soulrend. Currently too much damage across the board, too much autopilot. Um, so I imagine they're all getting damage nerfs and Winter Orb getting some sort of adjustment to how it's actually functioning. Hopefully. Uh, that means that Winter Orb won't be anywhere near as good as, as it is right now because Winter Orb is just stupid and for the past six months it has basically completely overshadowed every other skill for pure speed and um, efficiency of clearing. It's just not even, not even a contest. It's too autopilot and it is um, too brain dead of a skill in its current form so it needs some big nerfs and uh, maybe even mechanically. Uh, Stormbrand is a little too strong still for damage. Bane and Soulrend are just so easy to get lots of damage uh, in the early to mid game on so that it just carries you all the way through. So those are all getting a bit of a nerf and I think they'll still be fine. Not too sure about how Winter Orb's going to survive. We'll have to wait and see. But um, I think those will still be fine. Like Soulrend, Bane, I made a very strong Chaos character using all of those skills together. And uh, I think that'll still be fine overall. Warlord's Mark will now only apply its leech bonus to attacks. So there will be no more spell leech coming from Warlord's Mark. Um, basically, they thought it's too easy to get um, mana leech that way and life leech as well. You still be able to get life leech in some areas for spells, but mana leech basically next to impossible to get. You can get a bit um, from, um, let's see, a Watcher's Eye. Wrath Watcher's Eye, so if you still want it, you can get it that way. Uh, basically, Warlord's Mark is a dead curse now, I think. You'll pretty much never use it for Attack Leech. You'll only maybe use it for some Tectonic Slam viability on non-Jugs or Chieftains. So it's pretty much dead. Uh, that is a bit of a kick in the nuts to Spellcasters. It's not the biggest deal because... Um, you can get by without Leech just fine. My previous uh, character just then of Ice Nova um, did hexproof maps all the time, didn't have any Leech. It's a little bit more uncomfortable and you will have to deal with mana a bit more, but it's not the end of the world. It's not, you know, completely game breaking. It is just going to be slightly more annoying, I think. And then Herald of Agony itself um, is just a bit too strong right now and getting some um, minion damage reduced per vir virulence stack. Currently, you basically just build a really tanky character and then have some Herald of Agony doing everything for you. It is a bit of a dumb way of building and um, it's going to be reduced to some extent. There are a few passive tree changes coming our way. Powerful Ascendancy classes. So, let's see. The Occultist node, um, the one that gives you uninterrupted a regen for your energy shield when it starts regening is now going to be on the passive tree and the occultist energy shield stuff was condensed to two passives um i think that's totally fine i think occultist um only having two passives for your energy shield sort of thing is really cool because previously you have to invest four into that and it does feel kind of bad having half your ascendancy taken up just by energy shield so uh hopefully the two the new um, two node will be pretty powerful and worth taking. And otherwise, I think Occultist is going to be perfectly fine still. There's still a lot of good stuff on the Occultist, so I wouldn't worry about that at all. Uh, Trickster's Ghost Dance um, charges now generate slightly slower and provide less attack and cast speed. Uh, that's fine. It's still very strong. It was way too good easily, um, as you could see if you played it. So Trixes, I think, are still going to be insane, and uh, there's nothing wrong with this slight nerf here. 
Um, it was definitely warranted and I wouldn't worry about the tricks to matter if you're going to play spellcasters and uh, channeling builds you're still largely going to be picking tricks that still have very strong ascendancy and there's nothing wrong with this little nerf elementals beacon of ruin notable has been changed no longer granting prolif and lower minimum shock so it's going to be interesting to see the actual numbers behind this but it could very well just pretty much throw elementals viability out the window um, if the minimum shock sort of value is still around 15%, I think it'll be okay and usable. If it's 10, it's going to be really hard to justify taking an elementalist almost ever. Um, and the prolif thing, I mean, it's fine that it's getting nerfed or reduced, I think, but it's going to almost kill a lot of the usefulness of elementalist because right now, yeah, it's probably too strong to autopilot. Um, but you pretty much never want to take Elementalist for Ignite already because Trickster is almost always going to be better. And then, um, I don't even know what to say here. Like, I think Elementalist could still be usable depending on the number changes here. But if it's completely dead, I mean, it's dead, whatever. It's been very strong for the past year or two. And plenty of other ascendancies like a Berserker and a Slayer have been dead. And no one's really cared about that too much, right? You've played all your other ascendancies and ignored those and it's been fine if this just gets ignored for you know a year because it's too shit oh well it'll come back with some revamps at some other point so it sucks if it's going to be completely unplayable but you know that's just how things are there's a bit of a shift here or there to uh force you into trying out some other shit but um i think it'll depend on the value of the min shock because it can still be a very powerful ascendancy to spec into either way uh, blood magic and mortal conviction so they're completely changing mortal conviction which is the thing behind blood magic uh, it still gives a lot of life but it will now be a keystone that um, restricts you to only one non-banner aura skill but removes the reservation cost mana cost of herald skills and other specialization specialized reservation skills will need to be paid with life in full so it's going to give you one aura uh, instead of zero and just a increase in uh, mana and life cost that way or reduce sorry um, so it'll still be i think something you can actually look at to take as a blood magic character currently you spec into blood magic and then um that extra reservation life whatever and you pretty much never reserve your life and then you just don't get auras right now with this change you'll spec into blood magic and you get one big aura and i think that's going to make blood magic actually somewhat usable and more competitive um because most of the time you never want to spec into blood magic as an attack based character it just doesn't feel worth it since uh, auras are so important this may actually change that and it looks like a good change overall um, nodes behind keystones removed so things like mind over matter if you take it there's some uh, mana nodes behind it that are really strong they said they're going to try and remove those and um, put them well elsewhere i guess so that you don't feel forced into taking the node and then the stuff behind it uh, specifically for the stuff behind it so that will most likely uh, impact things like the mind over matter nodes uh, energy shield in the passive tree is getting somewhat reduced ever so slightly while also giving you some more flat energy shield throughout um, the earlier stages so that you can level with it a little better but uh, overall I think it'll be totally fine energy shield right now way too strong I think we can all agree on that you can get to like 15 20k es with some strong investment um, while otherwise like 10k with barely any investment should be just uh, a little less um, powerful but uh, still plenty good if you want to go that way and then um, indirect changes to unnatural instinct from passive tree changes so unnatural instinct in the scion area right now uh, buffs the crit multi nodes to an extremely large amount and instead of fucking up unnatural instinct what they've done is take away our crit multi nodes near the scion area and um, change them to accuracy so if you used unnatural instinct the 20 exalt jewel um, you have completely ruined our multi uh, in the sign area so fuck you uh, I think that's kind of a shitty change and overall I don't know sure it makes unnatural instinct worse but makes everything worse for us in the sign area so I don't know it doesn't feel good uh, items defense from equipment so they've basically nerfed dense fossils um, 
to no longer give that big 50% suffix instead uh, increased energy shield suffix instead it's going to be giving like a quality bonus and only to um what is it shields and armors so dense fossils will still be the way to go if you're going to craft energy shield crap because it's still very worth focusing entirely on energy shield um with the dense fossil you know increased likelihood thing but it won't be something you feel terrible about not doing anymore uh, like currently if you're going to craft energy shield stuff and you don't use dense fossils you feel like an idiot so that's just going to make it a little bit more um well a little less worth doing but still worth doing and then uh, as well as that they're removing the fact that you can craft quality onto boots gloves helms instead it's only going to be qu uh, quality crafts onto your shields and armors and i think that's fine like you'll still get lots of um big uh, energy shield items that way it just means your boots gloves and helms are going to be a little less huge uh, they then say powerful unique item rarity certain very powerful unique items will be harder to obtain now including headhunter eternity shroud solstice vigil so these are some pretty big deal items not quite sure exactly what that means harder to obtain does it mean they're going to take some of the um, ways of getting them out or does it just mean they're going to be less drop chance like the divination cards for a headhunter lower drop chance potentially um, harder to get through bestiary mods uh, lower drop chance in your eternity shroud probably all of that and that's fine you know the people that still want those types of items and going for those types of items are the you know absolute minority they're still going to get those types of items because they're rich they spend a lot of time and they will be getting these items the rest of us not really affected for the most part i don't think uh, new skill enchantments won't initially include enchants for the new skills because they're trying to um, figure out exactly which ones are going to be the best to add you know what type of cool extra enchants and all that um, so we won't have the new skills enchanted for probably at least a couple weeks which kind of sucks but is what it is and they'll figure out um, how they're going to change the enchanting system as well because they're going to add more enchants of course and that makes all the enchants harder to get once again so they are looking into actually changing the enchant system and hopefully they do you know to some extent where you like get to pick an enchant for the skills you're currently using or pick from three enchants every time you go to the lab some shit like that is definitely long overdue they're then also going to change and rework the leech system but uh, they wanted to do it for this patch looks like it's going to be a lot bigger than they expected and um, they'll change that in the m -m -m mega expansion in 4.0 so big leech changes coming eventually but not right now and then bleeding and attack ailments apparently there's plenty of changes to bleed hopefully enough that it makes um, bleed pretty competitive because bleeding is very you know looked down upon right now not super good uh, but then they're also going to look into um, ailments with attacks which currently don't have a natural growth and power during progression that they're happy with and don't provide enough interesting interactions they're going to look into ailments with attacks and um, plan to make more significant changes especially attacks in the future so that basically covers the entire development manifesto went over it in huge detail i think um too long didn't watch version i think everything looks pretty damn good i think we're going to be very busy with all the melee skill changes the ascendancy changes and the legion uh, league itself it looks pretty pretty damn good and fun and uh exciting stuff overall i don't think there's anything too you know worth crying about yeah spells um are still going to be fine there's a few that are getting nerfed energy shield will still be fine it is getting somewhat nerfed here or there uh it's obviously too strong in the current matter right and so are some of these spells they're getting some nerfs you're probably not going to really care about spells for a while because attacks and melee uh, are looking pretty hot and fresh right now but if you do still care about spells there's nothing stopping you from playing it. it's still going to be very strong it's still going to be very fun um things like divine eye are probably still going to be some of the funnest shit in the game it's just going to be a little bit different to build around and um a slight 
you know nerf to some of the energy shield or maybe ascendancy sort of paths you will be otherwise taking but i think there's a lot of exciting stuff here stuff that'll easily keep you busy for a league at least me i know i'll be kept very busy so um hopefully you guys are feeling pretty excited by what's coming in legion i definitely am um melee just big changes skill jam changes combat system changes it's a lot it's a lot to take in and um i I'm probably going to struggle reading the patch notes come tonight. So thank you very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this um, overview, and I'll see you next time.